Hello everyone, Simo here. This is the Hawker Seahawk, an early British jet fighter which first flew in 1947. It was in service with the Royal Navy and it operated mainly as a ground attack aircraft. It took part in the Suez Crisis, was sold to other air forces such as West Germany, India and the Netherlands and it finally retired in 1983. Apparently the aircraft was easy to fly, had good visibility for the pilot especially when coming into land on the carrier deck and had very few vices which made it a pilot favourite. To my mind as a modeler I think it's one of the prettier aircraft in the Royal Navy fleet. Today I'm going to start making the Hawker Seahawk from Stahlhardt papercraft models. The model along with many others can be downloaded for free and I'll put a link in the description below. There are 24 different liveries that can be downloaded and I've chosen the Seahawk F1806 Squadron RNAS Ford 1953. You can also download the instructions. Now the original model is at 1 60th scale but I thought that the graphics were so detailed that it deserved to be bigger so I used Photoshop to increase the scale to 1 33. So it's going to be pretty impressive when it's finished. Now I must emphasize here that this larger scale is for my own use. If you go on the Stahlhardt Papercraft site you can download the 1 60th scale Seahawk but not this one. So please don't complain that it's not there. At 1 60th scale the model can be printed on three sheets of A4. But of course increasing the scale brought the sheet count up to eight plus an extra sheet for the cockpit. Now I not only resized the model but I also tidied up some parts of the graphics. Not that the original graphics were bad, not at all. I have to congratulate Christoph Stahl on how good the model is. It's just that I wanted to lighten some of the panel and join lines so they wouldn't be so prominent in the finished model. So the first sheet has the front of the fuselage, the tailplane, and the cockpit canopy. This is the rear fuselage and a rester hook assembly, the fin, drop tanks and pylons. This sheet has the nose wheel assembly, speed brakes and exhaust details. Here we have the starboard wing and also the wheels. The wheels are boxed shape so I'll be changing them into balloon shaped tyres as you may have seen me do in other videos. And the port wing. As you can see you can either complete the model with the wings down or in the folded position. This is the internal box structure for the wings. You can either have a simplified structure for the undercarriage, you just cut these elements out and sandwich them together with a toothpick in the middle. Or you can go to town and make up the more complicated sculpted landing gear. These are the wheel wells and undercarriage doors. As you can see they are highly detailed, detail that might have been lost if I make it at the smaller scale. Here are the outer stores. There are more sheets with extra stores but they don't relate to this particular aircraft so I haven't bothered printing them off. Stahlhardt have uh, provided elements for a detailed cockpit interior which I've printed off. This is optional of course. Uh, if you don't want to have this you could just go for a blanked off cockpit canopy. Stahlhardt also supply a pilot figure Quite a complex little fellow to make for your cockpit which I think I will have for this model. You might be able to see the sheen on these pages. I printed the model on 200 gram paper and painted the paper with a satin varnish. I find this is the best way of providing some protection for the finished model. So I'm going to start off with the cockpit and see how that goes. Well here is the real thing, a little cramped I think you'll agree. I can't promise that the model will match this level of detail but I'll try. 
I'm following the instructions provided by Stahlhardt and there you can see them in the top right of the screen. So the first thing is to assemble the seat. Sorry, the video is a bit dark here because I forgot to turn on one of the lights. This rail is part of the ejection system. Even though the model comes pre-printed, it doesn't mean you can neglect the painting of the cut paper edges. The seat is completed and I can now make the rest of the office. Not much to do here, just glue on the main and side panels, the foot pedals and instead of the tiny paper joystick I use the bent paper clip. Before I go further, I want to make the pilot. Stahlhart provides pilots both sitting and standing for different eras, so I chose the one that looks like he came from the 1950s. As you can see, you have the options of different helmets and different faces. I chose one with a beard because, well, didn't all the Navy pilots have beards? Yeah, not sure about that one, but I'm going with it. Scale is 132nd. I've made this little pilot before and he comes out a bit tall, but of course you can cut him down so he fits into the cockpit a bit better. Stahlhardt also provides smaller scales down to 160th, which 
that's way smaller than my fingers or eyes can deal with. I feel like Dr. Frankenstein assembling his monster. Here's a real pilot, no beard, so I might have been wrong about that, but uh, my little guy looks quite similar. The nose section is straightforward with just four sections linked with tab joins. I want the wheels down, so I have to incorporate the wheel well. Nice sharp blade and watch the fingers.
To stop the model from sitting on its tail, it needs some weight in the nose, so I'm using some fishing weights covered in PVA glue. I'm never sure how much to use, so I always put in way too much. The tail is very simple, just a one-piece element. Unfortunately, you'll have to take my word on how easy it was because it was at this point that my camera stopped. The storage was full. So, there we go. I wanted to make the rudder look a little more realistic, so I cut that apart. It's not going to be a full working rudder, I'm just going to glue it back at a slight angle. At the bottom of the screen you can see the tail hook. The provided one is made of paper, but I decided to use a cocktail stick instead. You're going to see me do this a lot with my models, and that's stuffing any voids with tissue paper. I find it helps with the form and strength of the piece. Right, uh, now the wings have an internal box structure which helps to give them strength and also provides a place for the wheel wells. The box needs to be modified depending whether you want the wings down or in the folded position.
I'm making a big mistake here. I should be gluing the piece while keeping it flat on the table. I inadvertently introduced a warp, which would have made the wings look terrible. In the end, I had to tear apart one side to correct it. While it's drying incorrectly, I can get on with the wheel wells. There's lots of detail here. Fluid reservoirs, hydraulics, pipes, wires. I felt there was some room for improvement, so I added some bits of wire for extra pipes, etc. I'm not sure about the colours, I, I couldn't find a good reference photo. So that's enough for this part. In the next video I tackle making the rest of the body and the wings. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please like and subscribe and leave some comments. I really enjoy reading them. And with that I will see you all very soon. Bye bye.